this lesson we we'll looked at measure of location, which is also known as measure of central tendency. And when we talk about measure of central tendency, we are talking about things like the mean, the arithmetic mean, the median, and the mode. We have some other ones. So let me read what I have on the board. He said the measure of location is also known as, or it's also called measure of central tendency. And measure of location is a statistical information that gives the middle or center of a set of data. So in this case, we are concerned about the center of a set of data or the middle of a set of data. And there are many types of such measures, but the most popular ones are the arithmetic mean, the median, the quartiles, the percentile, the decile, and the mode. I'm talking about quartiles, just as the name implies, we're talking about when a set of data is divided into four, then you call it quartile, but percentile from the word percentage, when a set of data is divided into 100, we call it percentile, then decile from the word decimal, which means 10. We're talking about when a set of data is divided into 10. So all of these form the measure of location or measure of central tendency. So in this class, we'll focus on the arithmetic mean. The arithmetic mean of on group data specifically. So what is the arithmetic mean? It is the most important measure of location. And it is usually the sum of all the items in a set of data divided by the number of items in the set of data. What does that mean? If I have S1, S2, S3, S4, to the last one, Sn, the arithmetic mean, which is usually denoted by S bar, will be the sum of this data here, S1 plus S2 plus S3 plus S4 plus down to the last set, uh, to the last data in the set, then divided by how many of them do I have? Let me represent that with n, since I don't know the actual number of data that I have here. I have up to the last one, which I denoted as n. So the summation of all the items that make up the data divided by the number of items in the data is what we call the arithmetic mean of that data. Now, instead of having this long expression here, you can denote this summation with sigma so that S bar can also be written as sigma, that is the sum of, I mean the sum of S, let me put it S n in this case, since I don't know the number of data, the sum of S n, where S starts from one, the least, to the, um, to the highest, to n. Okay, so all over n, you may the arithmetic mean of my data. Now, what does that really mean? Let's take an example. You say find the arithmetic mean of the numbers 42, 56, 38, 41, 86, and 56. So the arithmetic mean of this data as bar will be 42 plus 56 plus 38 plus 41 plus 86 plus 56 divided by how many items do I have here? One, two, three, four, five, and six. So divided by six. And we need to add up all of this and then divide the result by um, six. Let's do the addition right away. 42 42 plus 56 plus 38 plus 41 plus 56 plus 56 
equal to 319, so s bar equal to 319 divided by 6. And 319 divided by 6 is 53.117 after unity. Arithmetic means s bar is 5317 or if we run it to one decimal place, that is 53.2. That is the arithmetic mean from on group data. Now, sometimes we may have, like this second one that we have here, it says sometimes when the number of items is large, there will be a need for, to form a frequency table. The frequency table, we have three columns. That is one of the columns we contain the items, the other one will contain the frequency, and then we need to find the product of the frequency and uh, the item, each of the item. So for a data like this, that's, you have an item appearing several times in the set of the data. To add all of this individually will take a lot of time. And even looking at this data, it's too large, we need to put it in a tabular form so we can see it at a glance and then calculate the arithmetic mean for the data. Let's do that. So say the following are the marks scored by 50 students in an examination. Calculate the mean marks for the student. So X for the marks, preparing the frequency table now. F for frequency. Then the product of the frequency and each of the item. I think the smallest item I have here is 12. So let's start with 12. Then the next one is well, 15. And we have the next one is 20. The next one is 25. And then the last one there is 30. When we look at the data and count how many times does 12 appear in the data? How many times does it, uh, does 15 appear? How many times does 20 appear? And so like that. So 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15, 16. So 12 appears 16 times. You go to move to 15. How many times does 15 appear? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay, I see this. I miss 11. 12, 12, 13, 13 times, 20, how many times are we up there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, 9 times, 25, how many times? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 times. It is good you stroke or strike out anyone that you have counted so that, like that time we omitted some 15, I think we did not strike them out. We wouldn't have known. So anyone you have counted, you strike it out so that you, you know which one is left. Then finally, 30, 1, 2, 3, very fancy there, 4, 5, 6, there are 6, 30 there. Yeah? Okay, there's still one here, 7, 7. So Fs means the product of X and F. So we are going to multiply this by this, this by this, this by this to get that last column fs 
12 times 16, 192, 192, and 15 times 13, 195, Twenty times nine is one eighty. Twenty five times five is one twenty five. And thirty times seven is two ten. In the summation of all of this, um, the mean, the arithmetic mean from a table like this is S bar equal to summation FX over summation f. In other words, we are going to add this colon here. Also add this colon here, then divide this colon by this colon. Let's do that. 192 plus 195, 902 to s bar is 902 divided by the add of this frequency colon also 16 plus 13 plus 9 plus 5 plus 7 902 divided by 50 902 divided by 50 18.04 to so S bar is 18.04.